on this. Here we go. Share screen, share screen, share screen. Hope we can get everything back. Perfect. Okay, great. So tonight, um, right, participants can see my screen. That's fantastic. So we're going to carry on from last week's session, which I found very interesting because last week we did um, the self leadership and how difficult it is that to self lead. Was the week Was that the week? Somebody before? else had a birthday last week. Birthday last week. So yes, of course I wasn't here. <laughs> Oh, yes, yeah, I got hijacked last week, I believe, <laughs> without me even knowing about it, I got hijacked. So um, that's right, we're Tuesday today. Oh my gosh, time flies. So tonight we're going to look at various different types of leadership, okay, and how important it is for us to realize that there's a lot of different types of leadership, and specifically we've been looking at the, the self-leadership, um, and we we sometimes we're mixing that up last week with uh, not last week the week before last with um self-leadership so the various types of leadership most professionals develop their own style of leadership based on factors um like experience and personality as well as the unique needs of their own company and its organizational structure so sometimes although we want to lead a certain way we can get forced to lead another way okay so we need to be very sensitive to is the company molding my leadership type as opposed to me advancing with my leadership type within in a company? So while every leader is different, there are 10 leadership styles commonly used in the workplace. So let's have a look at this. So in this session, we're going to cover the 10 common leadership styles and provide examples and common characteristics of each to help us determine which leadership style most we identify with. Now, the funny thing is pretty scary when you actually do have a look at it. So um, for, for me, everything is just going the wrong way here. Yeah, just hold on one second. There we go. Okay. So the first one is, <laughs> so the first one is a coach. All right. So when we look at a coach type of leadership style, it's all about motivation. And so a coach leader is someone who recognizes team members' strengths and weaknesses very quickly and helps to motivate individuals to self-improve, okay? And so you, uh, if you find that you have a tendency to be supportive, offer guidance instead of giving commands, value learning as a way of growing, ask guided questions, balance relaying knowledge and helping others find themselves, or you have a sense of self-awareness, then you could have the tendency to be a coach, um, motivational type leader. Now, what's interesting is that we probably can identify a few of the different traits throughout these 10, but predominantly, which one have you got more ticks in it than the one that's got less ticks in? So when you're having a look at that, you're going to say to yourself, okay, out of this one, out of those, Two for, two for six points, only one is relevant for me or two is relevant for me. Um, so it's not everybody can be a coach leadership style. Um, we'll probably recognize a few people that are coach. Um, yeah, it sounds like the 10 commandments. I agree, <laughs> I agree with you, Velma. Okay, so let's look at some benefits of your coaching leadership style. And that is coaching leadership is a positive, is positive in, in um, nur nurture, should be nurture, and it provokes the promotes the development of new skills, free thinking, empowerment, revisits companies' objectives, and fosters a confidence in the company culture. So your coaching leadership style actually is one of those that manages to get that uh, company culture right. Not all leaders can get a company culture going. So it's very interesting to realize that. Leaders who coach are often seen as valuable mentors in the workplace. All right. So some of you can already picture people that you know who have the coaching style, um, uh, leadership style. All right. Now, some of the challenges that our coaches have is that while the style has many advantages, it can be more, very time consuming as it requires one on one time with employees or people that you're working with. Um, which can be difficult to obtain in a deadline or deadline driven environment. So for me, um, uh, uh, somebody who thrives in this particular uh, motivational coaching style is actually Billy. 
really thrives in this one-on-one -on -one environment. But I don't think he realizes the, the time it takes, okay, because for him, the, the time just is, is open and it's there. And he so enjoys those moments that he doesn't realize the time that it actually takes. So, so he's somebody that strikes me to be very coaching leadership style kind of kind of individual. Um, but it's it's uh, the one on one time. It can be very. Uh, what's the word? Kill your personality almost because a lot of people absorb so much from you. OK, um, or you absorb so much from others. So that's the very first one is the coaching leadership style. Your second one is your visionary. So your visionary is your progress focused and inspirational type leaders. So they have the powerful ability to drive pro progress and usher periods of change um, into an organization. They're very inspiring and they inspire the employees and they trust the employees ideas when the employees come through. Um, so they're very persistent and bold, strategic, risk-taking, inspirational, optimistic, innovative, and magnetic. So when I went through this, I never actually pictured myself as a visionary type leader. But what I'm in right now, I'm, I'm actually forced to be, be some of the visionary type leader um, traits, which is actually quite interesting. So my environment right now is pushing me into a visionary type leadership, which I never thought that I had. Okay. Now, benefits are visionary leadership can help companies grow, unite teams, and overall company and improve outdated technologies and practices, which is literally what my team and I are doing on a daily basis right now. And it's actually quite interesting. So now the, the challenges that a visionary leader um, suffers is they may miss important details or other opportunities because they focused on the big picture. And that's quite interesting because unless you, and I, I realized that the other day, and a young um, intern that was in our offices did a spider diagram. And I realized that I was doing a lot of the big picture stuff um, and, and, and doing things. And then I would overlook the little, little things that needed to be done on a daily basis. Thank goodness for my team. They were doing the little things, but I was overlooking it. And when I did the spider diagram, I looked at the spider diagram. I thought, you know what? That's what I need to do to keep me focused on, to take this big picture that I've got into a daily um, and it's the best thing that ever happened to me. So I'm really grateful for, for him. They may also sacrifice the resolution of present day issues because they are more future oriented, which can leave their team feeling unheard. Okay, so uh, don't throw this at me later, Anton, but... <laughs> So if I don't hear you, it is what it is. Okay, run with it and, <laughs> and go with it. So it's interesting. I never saw myself as this, but right now where I'm at, I've had to function in this space, which I found extremely interesting. I uh, don't know that I'd like to stay there for long, but um, you know, I prefer to do the integrity gritty stuff, funnily enough. I don't really enjoy the visionary stuff, which is so strange um, for, for where I'm being pushed in right now. So check it yourself and see how many of these um, are relevant for you. Then we've got the servant, which is your humble, protective type of leadership style. And this is where you motivate your team. You have excellent communication skills. Personally, care about your team, encourage collaboration and engagement, and commit to growing your team professionally. Okay, so it's a very interesting um, leadership type. And I think there's a lot of people that believe they're servant type leaders, but in actual fact, they, they don't spend time personally caring about the team. And for me, that was a big highlight um, in the people that I've seen that have said that they're servant leaders. Okay. But the servant leaders are all about keeping the peace in the environment, which was, which for me was very ex exciting. So uh, clearly that's not me. Okay. Um, <laughs> Clearly not me. Benefits of a servant leader. Servant leaders have the capacity to boost employee loyalty and productivity, improve employee development and decision making, cultivate trust and create future leaders. Isn't that powerful? I think that's really powerful, but not you and I, okay? Uh, we have a lot of other traits, but not those ones. So you can see how a servant leader will function in, in the office space. Now, 
Remember, when we're talking about leadership styles, we're not just talking about CEOs of company because remember, all of us have, have we lead from where we are. So it's interesting to see that, that the least expected person could be a servant leader, but they're quietly going around the office or noisily going around the office. It doesn't really matter their personality here, but they're caring about the balance and the environment all the time. And so we must overlook the, the servant leader because most people think they're a servant leader. But when you look back again, and my, my point was the personally care about the team, you know, they can serve, but they don't have to care about the team. They, you know, they can appear as a servant leader, but they don't have to care about the team. And that is the key for me about, um, you know, anybody can create collaboration. You can create collaboration without actually caring for individuals. So, so for me, that was my, my key, key highlight um, in, in that one. So I'll bring this chart up again just now at the end, and we'll have a look at that. Um, some challenges for Michelle, a Michelle, may I ask you something? Yes, please. Um, on, your, on your screen right now, you've got the, uh, it was the coaching, and then and now it's the servant leadership. But the top, the top bit says you may be a coaching leader if... I and know. then it goes, is, is that meant to be? No, it's not meant to be. It just, I just okay. copy paste section. No, that's okay. <laughs> Thanks for pointing it out. I wasn't noticed it when I went to the, the second one. I thought, mm, okay. You can't, you can't say I'm not observant. Matt. So you're very <laughs> observant. So you may be a servant leader if you. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right i had a i worked until late o'clock and i had to try and prepare this in between as well because my topic changed when i realized we'd already done the other topic um so servant leaders are we back on servant leaders let's see if i shared my screen am i shalane am i on servant leader yes thanks cool okay so servant leaders can become burnt out as they often put their needs of their team above their own and they may have a hard time being authoritative when they need to be so now just because you might be servant leaders can still be authoritative leaders as well so if you've got a very a, a strong personality so for example you could have a d um personality profile but you can still be a leader so therefore being authoritative in this particular instance wouldn't wouldn't factor in because you know when to say yes, you know when to say no, you know how to get it, all everybody's ducks in a row, but it's the way in which you say it. Um, so so that that's where the servant leadership comes out. So um, for example, from my perspective, I think Michelle Rogers is a servant leader, as strong as she is. Okay, um, so she doesn't have a problem with the authoritative side because she personally cares about each and every single individual um, in, in, in our workplace completely. Um, and she's committed to growing the team and she's extremely professional about the way that she goes about doing it. And she has excellent communication skills. So, um, and always friendly and kind and, you know, out there for all of us. So for me, that's how I see her. So, but she definitely doesn't struggle with authoritative. Okay. She, she's she got that one in, in a nutshell. So she's worked that one out there. Okay. So that's your third one. Your fourth one is your, um, oops, there we go. So you may be a autocratic leader if... <laughs> <laughs> okay autocratic leader if you have self-confidence you're self-motivated communicate clearly and consistently follow rules are dependable value high structured environments believe in supervised work environments now this is really where I, where I generally function as a leader okay um, because most I tick most of those boxes for myself okay I follow the rules I can be dependable, um, self-motivated, self-confident. So I've got all of those ticks in the box, and I think Doc definitely has as well, okay? We're, and, and if you look at the, the it says autocratic, because it's authoritarian and results-focused. I'm very results-focused. You can ask Anton, okay? I'm very results-focused. Um, okay, benefits. Autocratic leaders can promote productivity through delegation, provide clear and direct communication, Reduce employee stress by making decisions quickly on their own. Okay. So we all think sometimes autocratic leaders is very negative, but there's a very strong positive side to an autocratic leader. However, 
they too have challenges, okay? Autocratic leaders are often prone to high levels of stress because they feel responsible for everything. And that's so true, true with regards to me. That's why I say, I can't believe I'm, I'm ticking the visionary box as well. But, but, it's, but I, I, it's definitely just where I am right now in, in the work situation. Since they lack flexibility, and that's definitely me, okay, and often do not want to hear others' ideas, these leaders are often resented by the team, okay? <laughs> very, very sad, eh? But it's because they lack flexibility, okay? So, so and, that, and the team feels that they're not heard. So it's very important if you are an autocratic leader, stay an autocratic leader, but learn the art of becoming flexible and learn the art of sitting down and asking others for their ideas. Even if you don't agree with their ideas, um, ask them for their ideas and then flesh it out, out from there. And that was something that I've learned over time as an autocratic leader is to sit down and ask others for their ideas. So, um, but I am, I have a tendency to be very inflexible at a lot of times. Okay. So, and then I'm aware of it. And then I've got to go and change that, that inflexibility. Okay. So that was the fourth one. So the fifth one is you may be a hands off leader. I'm, um, maybe someone else can pronounce that word for worse for me is laissez-faire. <laughs> I should not be doing French. Laissez-faire. Thank you. Laissez fair. There we go. I got it. Thank you. Isaac's fair. Isaac's fair. Laissez fair. Okay. That's message, George. That's a diuretic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that is your autocratic and delegatory um, leadership, which is a hands off leadership style, which means that you effectively know how to delegate. You've learned the art of pure delegation, not dirty delegation, proper delegation. Um, you believe in freedom of choice, provide sufficient resources and tools, will take control if needed, offer constructive criticism, which I don't believe there is such a thing as constructive criticism. You, either criticize, you either criticize somebody or you build them up, one or the other, okay? So I don't believe in, oh, in constructive criticism. Foster leadership qualities in your team, promote an autonomous work environment, okay? So very similar to, to, it's just the complete opposite to autocratic, okay? The style encourages accountability, creativity, and a relaxed work environment, which often leads to higher employee retention. So it looks like a pretty, a pretty good leadership style to learn some of the art of if we are going through, through them. And then you've got the challenges that they go through. And that is the leadership style does not work well with new employees, okay? As, as the new employees need guidance and hands-on support in the beginning. This method can also lead to a lack of structure, leadership confusion, and employees not feeling properly supported. So if you do have the style, it's so important to make sure that you delegate the new employee to an existing employee and actually have them as a buddy system. So if you have a buddy system running, then you don't have to do the, the, the hands on holding hands, but somebody else can do it, but you can keep in control of it. That's one, one way that this style could be used very effectively by challenging their weaknesses. And that's what we've got to be doing here, saying, okay, fair enough, those are the weaknesses or the challenges we have. How do we make them our strengths? Okay, so that was five. Number six, okay, you may be a democratic leader if you um, are supportive and innovative, value group discussions, provide all information to the team when making the decisions, promote a work environment where everybody shares their ideas, you're rational, you're flexible, and you're good at mediation, okay? So some of these you'll start seeing now, even though I might be autocratic, I have a few democratic um, things, but it's not because it's natural. It's because I've had to learn things. So you'll see, you've learned behavior as you've gone as of to see, but ultimately we are generally function very strongly in one of, one of them, but we have a, a, because of, for those of us that are on leadership development, we learn a little bit out of all of the, the others. 
Okay, so the benefits of being a democratic leader is under this leadership style, employees can feel empowered, valued, and unified. It has the power to boost retention and morale. It also requires less managerial oversight as employees are typically part of decision-making processes and know what they need to do. So I, I personally, I think it's one of the, the, the nicer styles, um, leadership styles, if we can man, manage, manage them. But then there are challenges as well. And the, this leadership style has the potential to be inefficient and costly as it takes a long time to organize big group discussions, obtain ideas and feedback, discuss possible outcomes and communicate decisions. It also can add social pressure to members of the team who don't like sharing ideas in group settings. Okay, now I'm in an environment at the moment where I have a very autocratic leader that's trying to become, trying to manage his team in a democratic way. And let me tell you what, sometimes it crashes and burns, all right? Because um, when, a, when a team member shares their ideas, they have a tendency to sometimes shut those ideas down because they don't agree with them. So it's a very, um, if you are wanting to practice this leadership style, then I highly recommend that you are open to, to learning and, and growing through it when interacting with people, because it's very difficult sometimes to get um, other people's opinions and ideas and um, create a unified environment. Okay, it's not easy. Then you may be a pace setter, all right, leader, if you are helpful and motivational, set high, high um, standard, all right, focus on goals, you're slow to praise, will jump in to hit a goal if needed, are highly com uh, com competent, should I say, value performance over soft skills. Now, I would have thought that this was autocratic, okay? But they call it a pace setter um, style. And your pace setter is one of the most effective styles in achieving results um, because they're primarily focused on performance and because they set high standards as well. And their team do start to, to actually get them. So the benefits of pace setting leadership style pushes employees to hit goals and accomplish business objectives. It promotes high energy and dynamic work environments. So... I think uh, some of our academy team run on this pace set as well, which is actually quite interesting. Um, I never thought about it that way. Challenges. Pace setter leadership can also lead to stressed out employees. So I am taking the heed and warning on this one. Okay. As they're always pushing towards a goal or a dead, deadline, the fast paced work environment can also create miscommunications or a lack of clear instructions. So for me, I'm just going to pause there because when what I've realized going through this this um, these different leadership styles is that you cannot actually have one leadership style that's blanket to everybody because I know my autocratic leadership style is is going to terrify a person like Rion. Rion needs a and my pay set a leadership style is also going to put pressure on on a youngster like like Rion in my environment. So I now need to identify which of these styles is going to get the best results from different team members, learn the style with that particular one, because ultimately I have a collective team goal that I would like to achieve. So it's great to have one leadership style, but we're not going to speak to everybody that's there. And when I was going through this and I saw all of the ones that, that I have a tendency to work in and um. I have a tendency to, to not incorporate someone like, like this, this Rion who's, um, he's a go-getter, he wants to get a go-getter, but is, is in a space of insecurity at the moment with who he is and where he is and how he's settling in. So I now need to go and say, okay, which one of these styles, if I implement them, will bring him to the fore? And he's really trying, and, he, and the, 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 the sweetest thing is that he's actually trying to accommodate my leadership style, but he's going to burn out if I allow him to do that. So I, I'm so grateful that I actually did this, and I, I'm going to do it with my team, um, not this week, but next week or the week after, and sit down and say, okay, let's be honest with ourselves. Which one do you resonate towards? Which, which of these leadership styles will make you a better person? Because if I know which leadership style 
enables, let's say, Rian to become a better person. It's my responsibility to, as a leader to lead him that way. You see how dogmatic we can sometimes be with leadership, say, this is me, tough tacky for you, and, and get over it. But it doesn't work like that for, for everybody. So that was a big learning um, for me, because when I look at the three ones that I'm functioning at the moment, I'm going to burn Rian out. Okay, so um, I'm going to put too much on his plate, and I can already see his, his eyes are starting to be a little bit bewildered today. Um, he was like a deer in, 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 in the corner in the office and I could see the pressure that was on him and I was trying to work out what is it, why is he in the space and he's in the space because he's trying to do one, um, build his, his, his empire, which is his, um, his growth business, okay, as an educator and he's trying to fulfill a job function and it's a job function, he's a fish out of water right now. So if I don't embrace a new leadership style with him, I'm going to burn him out. And, and he wants the challenge and he wants to do it. And he's so willing and he is so capable. But I need to adapt as a leader. And that's something I learned um, through there. Anybody want to comment on anything to this point or anything that's resonated with you before we continue with the last three? You all good? Cool. Let's continue. Uh, share screen, share screen. Cool. Okay, so let's now go to number eight, which is transformational, which is challenging and communicative. Communi that one, communicative. Okay, communicative. So this is very similar style to our coaching style. Um, but this style here focuses much more on communication, goal setting, and, and employee motivation, okay? And play, it puts a lot of energy more on the, 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 the goals and how to achieve the goals, whereas the coaching was on the individual and how do we get the individual through a process. So here, you may have a um, transformational leader if you are, have mutual respect for your team, provide encouragement, inspire others to achieve their goals, think of the big picture, places value on intellectually challenging your team, creative and have a, have a good understanding of organizational needs. This is kind of like where I think I need to be functioning in with, with, with a person like we aren't, but I'll not jump to that too quickly. Um, transformational leadership values personal connection with their teams which can boost company morale and retention. It also values the ethics of the company and the, and the team instead of being entirely goal-oriented. So you see how different this, this could be. And if I had to go and function in this space with Rian for a while, I can get better results from him than actually being who I am right now. So it's very interesting how, for me, how I've, I discovered that through this, going through this process. So since transformational leaders look at individuals, it can cause team or company wins to go unnoticed. These leaders also overlook details. Okay. Um, so if you function purely in trans a transformational leadership, you could very similar to the, the, the coach, um, just too much one-on-one -on -one time, too much um, that you need to balance it. Whereas um, this one focuses a lot more on the team, whereas the coach focuses much, much more on the individual. All right. Okay, now let's look at one of my favorites, which is your transactional uh, performance focused leaders. Okay, so you may be a transactional leader if you value corporate structure, um, micromanage, don't question authority, are practical and pragmatic, value goal hitting, and are um, reactionary. Okay, the transactional leader is someone who's laser focused on performance very similar to that pay setter one that we had earlier on. And the, the transactional, um, you know, transactional leader um, also focuses a little bit on mentorship as well, okay, and training people to achieve their goals. So transactional leaders facilitate the achievement of goals through short-term goals and a clearly defined structure. So they are focused on getting the job done, but in short-term goal structures, not in long-term. 
So this would definitely not be Doc Ant because he is so long-term focused, it's, it's frightening, okay? So being overly focused on short-term goals and not having long-term goals can cause a company to struggle with that adversity. This style stifles creativity and is unmotivating to employees who are not incentivized by monetary rewards. Okay, so your transactional can sometimes want being transactional. Okay, the carrot at the end of the stick, all right, those monetary rewards. If you give too many monetary rewards, you try to focus too much in the transactional environment. Okay, and it was an interesting uh, factor for me. Okay, number 10 is the bureaucratic. So you may be a bureaucratic leader if you are detail oriented and task focused. Okay, value rules and structure have a great work ethic, are strong willed, have a commitment to your organization, and are self disciplined. So, alongside with servant leadership, I see Michelle Rogers sitting in this one as well. Okay, bureaucratic leaders are, are similar to um, autocratic, except they are team focused and they follow the rules and procedures precisely, okay, which is interesting. So they're not exactly the same, okay. Bureaucratic leaders, style can be efficient in organizations that need to follow strict rules and regulations. Each person in the term, and sorry, in the team company has a clearly defined role which leads to efficiency. These leaders separate work from relationships to avoid clouding the team's ability to hit goals, okay. Caution factor on this one, is that this style does not promote creativity, which can feel restricting to some employees. This leadership style is also slow to change and does not thrive in an environment which needs to be dynamic. Now, that's interesting. And I don't think many, um, if you're a good bureaucratic leader, I don't think you're going to actually suffer those um, challenges at all, which is pretty cool. Okay, so... Those are some of the leadership styles. I'm definitely going to post the PowerPoint up for you as well so you can actually slowly go through it because what we need to do now is start looking at how do I choose to develop my leadership style? Okay, so here are some of the questions you can ask yourself when trying to determine which style is actually really the right one for you. All right. So the first one would be, what do I value more, goals or relations? So when you go back and look at the slides, you're going to ask yourself, am I more goal-oriented or more relationship-oriented? And then look at each one of them and start ticking, ticking for yourself um, how many of those points are relevant for you within each one of them, okay? Michelle, do, may I ask you something? Yeah, sure. Have you maybe got a, a grid like that, what, what, you, what you now are going to say, relationship or, mm -hmm. uh, um, or, or goal? Goals. If you if you have a, a grid where you would tick which one have you got more blah 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 and that you then can basically see where you are a, a gen where, where where your sort of line sort of uh, your flow uh, your, your flow goes. chart goes yes okay yes. awesome because you know I think we all got something of yes. every single one exactly Even though I said the uh, I'm not a servant leader in the in the workplace that there are one or two things that I do have. Yes. But the least, where, what do I have the least of? Yeah. And what do I have the most of? It, it, it's very interesting. It is interesting. I'm going to go ask Costa, because Costa will, will judge that better <laughs> than yes. I would judge it myself. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And also, I was thinking about it when I was going through this one and saying, maybe if we rated ourselves out of one to five, Okay, I mean, Doc will always say one to 10, but I'm going to say one to five. And then say to yourself, this is, I'm, I'm most like this, I'm least like this, you know, sort of one is I'm um, least like, five will be I'm most like. And then also if you get a score, and then you can actually see the score where you're actually balancing in, in each of them as well. You know, so, so what are your traits that you had naturally have um, through them? Because as you, Vilma, as you've learned over the years as well, is that, we have learned to adapt with the people that are around us to, to how we work with certain people in certain ways. Um, and, and sometimes when we're under pressure, we just go down the road of our natural one. Um, and when are those days that we go down the road of our natural one? And what is the damages that, that we have along, along the way? 
<laughs> Absolutely. I mean, like I'm like if I'm having a bad day, I'm like so hellish, inflexible, it's ridiculous. Like I'm not gonna budge, no nothing. So it's pointless bringing your new ideas to me or anything else. I could just go with the flow and tomorrow's a whole new day. Then bring me your ideas. And it's just and I know that. And sometimes I've got to go and go for a walk in the garden and sort of say, okay, now you're gonna how do I unwound this? inflexibility that I have a tendency to to all of a sudden grind into um, and it's because I'm so focused on if I go down this 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 um, rabbit hole I need to go to the rabbit hole until I find the damn rabbit then I'll come back out with the rabbit now give me another idea and I'm happy with it you know um, but don't throw another idea while I'm going down the rabbit hole because it just it throws me off and I, I want to go and get that rabbit over there so it's interesting how how we have a tendency to rabbits at the same time <laughs> Art of delegation. Like, okay, you go fetch that rabbit. You go fetch that one. You go fetch this one. I'm after this one over here, you know. Um, but it is interesting. And, and I have seen, um, like I used the example earlier on, a very autocratic leader trying to, 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 to do that, um, which is the one that was, do you have the, the ideas from the people, the, all that, that one. And it's like, it's not work. Some days it just doesn't work because they are so autocratic and under stress at that time that when somebody says something they don't take it or they twist it around then that person gets offended or their feelings get hurt um so so we've got to be very sensitive if we are going to play in different try and try different styles and um, then we need if i'm trying that style for now then i need to be that that leader doesn't matter what's happening and i can't take myself into my natural style so we're going to be very sensitive about this okay it's very challenging okay i'll do a grid i'll do a grid Cool. Okay, so do I believe in structure or freedom of choice? All right. So sometimes, you know, I believe I, I'm really um, one that believes in, in in structure, but I have a tendency to to say I believe in freedom, but maybe not necessarily freedom and choice. Okay, it's freedom to work with what I tell you to work in. <laughs> okay, you get what I'm saying. So if Wilma gets that one, the rest of you never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay another one is would i rather make a decision on my own or collectively okay i have a tendency sometimes i'll make the quick decision but i love i personally love making collective decisions i, I, I personally love it so um that's one of mine do I focus on short or long-term goals? Mine is definitely short-term. I have a, I, I know that I've got to get over there, but I'd rather focus on the short-term goals. Um, and I'm always going to, to my team and the big whiteboard and I need to put a date there. Then I function towards that date. Once I've got that date, then I function to the next one, you know, like little sprints, little sprints, little sprints. Um, and then somebody comes to me the other day and says, please, can I have a five-year plan? And I'm like, what for? <laughs> like why why do you want a five-year plan for me what are you what's that going to achieve i just need to get through tomorrow you know so yeah that's like, why you're married to end that's exactly why i'm married you do the five-year plan um as so i remember way back in two in the year 2000 when i i was really i mean i didn't do any leadership whatsoever i was just the the follower i just did the paperwork i just did the administration i didn't want to be in front i couldn't even read a a, a bible verse in front of people okay i couldn't even open my, my my mouth in front of people and um and what vilma said, just said there about oh, Anthony. You. <laughs> and, and he comes to me and he says um oh i've just had this dream and i've got a 25 year plan i'm like seriously who even thinks about 25 years down the line? I just need to know, like, even the one-year plan for me is like a stretch, and I just need to know what's happening this month. And he's so excited about a 25-year plan. I mean, like, seriously? Um, so, yeah, so that's it. And for me, he comes with those, those oh, I've got a 25-year plan. I mean, who does it? five years stretches me but a 25 year it's like crazy that's why that's why he can see the the um the generational uh you know the the seven generations he can literally see the seven generations outflowing um of of the the business in these he's in now that he wants to take it seven generations deep it's like he can see it i'm like whoa go buddy okay all right so does motivation come from empowerment or direction Okay, so which one triggers you? And then 
what does a healthy team dynamic look like? So these are the kind of questions that one could ask themselves when trying to work out what is my what is my style and also what does a healthy team dynamic look like to you it's it's then also comes with adaptability and how does one adapt into into these different um, styles okay and you believe it we have 10 people on this evening we're doing the 10 commandments with the 10 leadership styles <laughs> okay so to develop your leaders, you need to co um, consider some of these. These are the things that are going to help you identify your, your leadership, leadership style is go back and look at, um, try some experiments, okay, to various different approaches, to circumstances, pay attention to the outcomes, be, fle be flexible and changing. So if you really want to know what's your core style that you work in and you don't know yet, and it's um, then do some experiments with the people around you and see how people buy into to certain things. But I think all of us on this, this group, we've pretty much worked out by now how we lead um, uh, people. Seek a mentor. Okay, speaking with leaders with more experience than yourself can offer great insight to how they develop their style and what worked for them. Because remember, all of them are good. And I believe that all are um, relevant in different um, circumstances. Ask for feedback. This is something the hardest thing that most people don't like is to get feedback. And when you get um, feedback, it must be constructive feedback. Like I said, I don't believe in constructive criticism. There is no such thing from, from my perspective as constructive criticism. You either criticize someone because you have an objective that you want to say. If you want to come with constructive feedback, it's all about how I can help you to develop further. Okay, so it's constructive feedback, not constructive criticism. Okay, seek feedback from individuals you trust and will give you an honest answer. Then be authentic. If you're trying to perfect a leadership style that is in a opposition to your personality or morals, it will come across inauthentic. Try to choose a leadership style that is in alignment with your strengths and how you can work with it. Okay, so that is... That is some mouthful and a whole lot of um, things that we've, we've been through through this evening. So who would like to share what they've learned from this whole process? Michelle, could you put that last slide up? The last, last one? Yeah. Okay, let me just do that quickly. Sorry, I was just going backwards to get the first one up with all of them. That's that one. There we go. Share screen, share screen, there we go, that one. Uh, yeah. The, uh, um, speaking with a leader with more experience than yourself. Yeah. Uh, can offer great insight. Uh, well, what I have found, and they, there are fewer people that are older than I am, and what they are younger than I am. <laughs> so I'll be honest here. And um, that that's age sometimes has nothing to do with it. 100%. Love it. And that uh, uh, personality style, I yes. think, is, is very. Uh, um, uh, uh, if you aim for a personality, a development of personality, that the leadership that most suits you yes. will, will, will necessarily be there. And, and it, it doesn't necessarily have to be just one. Yes. Uh, out of the 10 that you mentioned, uh, yeah, that one. Uh, uh, I, I think I can fit into many of them, but more into most and less, least into some. Yes, yes. I'm going to draft a. I'm going to draft a, a spreadsheet and I'll add it to the, the the group as well, just to go through and say, okay, and tick 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 tick, so that you can actually get an idea of which one you have the most um, in and have a tendency to. And and quite rightly, as you said early on, you will then see whether you you're lending more towards the people side versus the goal side or vice versa, um, and and work it out from there. And it's it's interesting that. Um, yeah. Anybody else want to add? George will have something to say, surely. Come on, George. 
<laughs> nope, I'm quiet tonight. <laughs> Mioni, Wayne, Liz, Sonia, Casta. I am very curious to know where I fit in. <laughs> ask your wife. <laughs> uh, it's not going to help. I need to ask the expert. <laughs> oh, how can you tell her she's not an expert? <laughs> no, um, <laughs> ah, that, that's really revealing, eh? Hey? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm going to ask Costa where she feels uh, she is. I would love to know where she sees herself because I also think she's the youngest in the group. Yeah, yeah. But has, in a short life, done quite a few things already. Awesome. Love to hear from you, Costa. I must, I must agree with Wilma as well. I, I also have um, various points in all of the, of the 10. Yes. But then there are some that I'm not that I'm not into. So I will also need to sit and figure out exactly where is my strong point in, yes. in especially this wheel. Um, figure that out. But yeah, as as Wilma also said, it's it's difficult to determine. Look, you're only in in this one. Yes. But you've got various points. In the others as well. Yeah, I also think it's very interesting that the grit is is one of those like with your personalities. Yes, you, you can't group yes. system because it's it's going to come out if you do. You you can't you know it's going to show an inconsistency because exactly. if you show consistency, which I think is probably the most important word here, then you 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 you're gonna follow that line and go where your consistency takes you. Awesome. That's it, Joel. Now, yeah. Or rather, so Vilma, or rather maybe instead of consistency or inconsistency, your adaptability to the circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. And your flexibility to move. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So I, I agree with you. I, I, when I when I looked at all this, and, and and many years ago, I did a leadership course. Um, Tessa, you might have done it with me. George might have done it with me as well. And that was uh, Bright Star. And um, and they gave us the leadership styles. And, and it was almost, it was so long ago that it was almost like I had to fit into one of them. And if I didn't fit into one of them, it was like I was, I, I was not a leader. And Again, just re going through this again and, and being triggered with, with last week's one and with what George was saying about last week about leadership and all that kind of thing. So when I looked at these 10 stars, I thought to myself, you know what? It's actually not about you just being that one. It's about you being that so the flexible to the people that are around you that need to be led in different ways. And for me, that was it was such a, a, a different way of looking at this. Yeah. yeah and the autocratic leader is going to you're going to find the least flexibility i think mm, mm, absolutely awesome and the laissez fay which is <laughs> the late back is going to give you yeah but but both of them have got positives and negatives they have they definitely have i mean definitely. i hate the word autocratic but <laughs> there are definitely some good points in there there were some amazing and points in there I might have had different results in some instances yes. within my, my practice. Too true. So true. Wayne, Liz? Um, I'm very interesting, Michelle. Very, it makes me think back for many years. Yeah. Um, having had, I think, the three principles that I served as these, dep these deputies, yeah. all three of them were autocratic. Wow. It was, it was tough. It was really, really tough. It was autocratic and transactional, and it had to be just like that. Yes. Then I come along being democratic, very servant orientated, as well as transformational, where the people were more important to you me see. than just that. 
So I would walk the walk with you, take your hand and go with you. And we got much more achieved than what the actual principal, when he was wop, 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 giving all the rules and wanting it done like that. It, it just changed the game. Wonderful. And I wasn't very, very well liked by them because them, yeah. the style was so different. Um, but you learn very you, quickly you how will to have been please them. Oh yeah. yeah, by the staff for sure. I mean, and the and the students at school, they they just respected you very differently. Yeah. Um, but it's also you learn very quickly what to do for them to keep them happy. But then you are ultimately as the deputy responsible for the whole staff as well as the children. So oh. you get more done by that. So Correct. It's, it's very interesting. But having moved away from it, it's it just brings back lots of memories. Because um, I dote on what I do now. So I don't have to be a real leader. I'm just a family member um, being there for everybody and just sharing with them, being yeah. more steward than, than anything. So he's got to do all the, the, the with the grid <laughs> yeah. so that he can work it out. Um, yeah. Yeah, but it's a little bit in all different aspects, yeah. but yeah, it would much be easier or be far easier to work it through on the grid. Yeah. To, Content. Absolutely. Now, I'll definitely, definitely do a good. And, and I'm, I'm thinking of something else to see if we can't bring it down to, to some to to finding out. And and Liz, you're quite right because even though you're functioning at home, you're still functioning in those spaces because now you're leading from the other side. You're leading as a shepherd now, so you're leading from behind, you know, and encouraging and motivating. And whereas whereas the 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 autocratic and that wants to run from up front. And, and say, this is who I am, whereas you're still leading, and even in your family now, you're still doing this encouragement and uplifting and upbuilding and all that kind of thing through 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 that environment as well. But it's much more rewarding, that I can tell you. Oh, definitely, <laughs> most definitely. <laughs> and what's nice too is even um, for some of us that don't see ourselves or we might not be in a leadership position per se, um, we still actually resonate quite strongly with at least one or two of them. So that shows that we do, do lead differently, but in a different um, environment. I also noticed that the children still come to me in a certain way and they expect me to, to, to respond like I did before because wow. we have, yeah, it's very interesting because they, they know that's how I function. So they'll, they'll ask like that and, and we'll sit together and decide and, and so I'll be awesome. very democratic about it, y'all. That's actually awesome. That's really nice. Yeah. Now I'm autocratic with my children. They 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 the team that <laughs> they the team that resent me. <laughs> no, <we didn't. laughs> no, no collaboration there. You just go do. Uh, <laughs> Why do I have to do that? Because I say so. <laughs> exactly. Why? Because I'm your mother. Now shut up and go. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Shem Costa is struggling with her microphone. Uh, she did put something into the chat box, I see. Okay, thank you. Not working. I think the environment you surround yourself allows you to open up in different ways. Some places allow you to open up and some places don't. 100% Custer. Absolutely. And so even if you even if you are, let's say, for example, which, which Liz alluded to just now as well, you might have an autocratic leader and now you're going to battle to bring your, your um, democratic side out if that's where you function or your servanthood out there. And if you're, and if you're not strong enough as in personality, to 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 continue with who you are they squash you down to such an extent that you end up doing nothing okay um that's a tough one too shalane you got anything to say there tessa um, yes dr michelle i think sometimes your occupation would also depend on your leadership so if you're an artist and you're a paint you know you like to paint pictures you might have a laissez fair type of leadership style. Mm. Uh, while if you're in the army, you might have autocratic leadership style. You can't have a laissez fair uh, <laughs> leadership style there. So occupation sometimes also, uh, you know, determines which style will be uh, applicable. Hundred percent. I totally agree with you, and that is what I discovered when I looked at the visionary. I would, I'm like way of visionary style whatsoever. But right now, I need to function in a lot of those um, those tick boxes. So I'm, I'm so glad that being new to that, um, 
it, it's saying now I know I need to 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 watch out for the challenges that are there because otherwise I could step forward into that because I, I'm not strong in that leadership style. So it's quite interesting. So so yeah, you're pointing it out quite, and and we've got to change as we go. You know, um, you know I just came in, I accepted the the position to to actually just get the job done. And now I've realized that everybody's looking at me to say, well, how are we going to get the job done? Where are we going? And I'm like, I don't know. I haven't a clue. <laughs> you know? It's like, oh, my word. So, yeah, anyway, cool. Anybody else like to add? Tessa, you want to say something? Um, George, some more? Because you spoke very a lot last, last week about the, this kind of, kind of um, uh, stuff, George, last week. We all good. Yeah. Cool. Okay, I guys. Love tonight. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually physically post the PowerPoint now when we off on the group so that you can literally look at each one. Okay, um, which will probably be better than just listening to the the video again. I will then upload the video so it's available. But I think the PowerPoint is going to make more sense. And then I'm going to I'll get the grid ready and then post the grid on so you can actually go through each of these and have a look at the the grid side Mersh, you want to say anything more anton you're good i think maybe we need to also realize that there's no right and wrong 100 percent. there's no right or wrong every style is yeah. needed yeah very okay awesome um like um Shalane, before Mish speaks, like she alluded, you don't, you don't need a laser fair being the head of your, your troops that are going out into the army. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You want to say, Mish? May I say something funny? Yeah. Uh, I, I just, when I switched on my video just now, uh, I, I was, I'm, I'm confused with myself. I, I moved my head to the right, but on the picture, I'm moving it to my left. And that is frustrating. Okay, I'm going left. I'm going, you'll have to mirror your thing because I'm going right now and I'm going right on my screen left and there. So you'll have to mirror it. <laughs> you'll have to mirror your, your, your camera. Yes, I don't know how, how that happened, but awesome. hang on. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yes, Mish. Look, it was a great session. Um, when we get the grid, we're going to find that each of the 10 leadership style, we all have it in us. Yeah. Um, for example, I will have more servant, but I will have some of all the others mm. because of the um, work that I do, the people that I engage with, because you need to take their leadership styles into consideration as well, mm. because yeah. I cannot walk into an aut autocratic office um, leadership ship like yourself and tell you what to do because the resistance <laughs> now the resistance I will get yeah. um, shows that the styles will clash but yeah. because I'm a servant I know how to deal with the autocratic um, leadership true. style the same with a pay setter a demographic um, yeah. uh, um, and a visionary as well and a yes. coach the one-on-one -on -one. sometimes I need to deal with people one-on-one -on -one. True. Um, so true a whole lot will come through so when we get the grit um, I think that will be an excellent tool to go through. And awesome. maybe um, maybe I will have less servant um, trades when I go through the others. Um, it depends. <laughs> but yes, um, some people see me maybe more as a servant um, leadership, but yeah. I might be a pace setter um, as well. Correct. Correct. Definitely helpful yes. and motivational. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I think but Leonie when, said it when she said you're gonna find out your your the, the range of your adaptability. And yeah. I think that's going to be the magic of, of yes. the grid. Yeah. Yes, no, absolutely. I agree with more. That's great. Yeah. But and, I, and, and like Anton, I see I'm very much democratic, supportive, innovative, but great ideas, always working on ideas, wanting to work in a team, that kind of thing. So it's very interesting. Um you know, back then I could be totally wrong. It'll be interesting. So we'll definitely get the grid to you guys. Awesome. Thank you, Doc. Anton, you good? I'm good. Thanks, Doc. 
Awesome. Patience and lots to learn. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll take it out and look at it through the, with the team because I'd love to know how each of the team functions in the, within this because we're ultimately a leadership development company. So if we're a leadership development company, we need to be developing leaders, not followers. And that was a big aha for me. <laughs> awesome, guys. Thank you so much. Good night Thank and um, great session. Take care. Thank Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.